the sort of diagnostic or search that we do for good models is testing one model versus another. Now this doesn't exist in the standard statistical philosophy where you have one model, you test it for absolute truth in the data, you reject it or don't, and then you need to go find new data. That's not how we do things. We know all our models are false. We know that if we had enough data, any model would be rejected. It's simply a matter of getting the standard errors low enough so that we can measure the alphas that are there. So what we often want to do is see in the data, well, which model is better than some other model? But we want to use statistical inference to see if there's statistical evidence for one model versus another model. So how do we do that test? Uh, let me show you in, a, in an example of how you can think about that question. Example will be the Fama French three-factor model. Expected returns are, there's the market return, the HML, and the SMB. And you might want to ask the question, do we really need all three of these factors? Particularly, if you look at the data, since small stocks are well-priced, they have pretty big datas, maybe we can drop the SMB in favor of uh, just the two-factor model, and the different betas in the market will ac account for the small stocks rather than SMB. Well, how do we go after that question? Can we drop SMB or not? There's a bunch of wrong answers to this question, so let's not do one of the wrong answers. One of the wrong answers is to look at that time series regression, and then, oh, the T's on the S, uh, are those T's on the S uh, significant? Well, that measures whether the, the betas are significant, but that doesn't measure the question, can we put, can we delete SMB from the model uh, in general? Does, it, does, it, does deleting SMB from the model uh, change our alphas? That's the question we're after. Similarly, you might look at the R squares. They, these tell you if it's a good model of variance, but they don't tell you if dropping SMB uh, substantially reduces it as a model of mean, which is our main task here. Another thing that a common way to do this wrong is to look at the lambdas. Is the, uh, is the factor risk premium for SMB small? Is the T for the lambda less than 2 in a cross-sectional regression? Is the expected value of SMB uh, equal to 0 at just looking at the time series? In words, is the factor priced? Well, that's wrong too because it's quite easy for the mean of SMB to be, uh, to be positive, but SMB, dropping SMB doesn't do anything to affect your ability to price other assets, which is what we're afterwards. Another common wrong question is to compare the model with SMB and the model without SMB by their GRS test statistics. Compute alpha prime V inverse alpha for one model and then the other model, and then say, aha, this model doesn't reject. It must be better than the, mo the other model. The reason is because you're using different Vs here. And it's very easy to get a model to not reject by, by making no progress on the alpha and just blowing up the V matrix. That's not a good way. That, that test statistic only tests, is this model true? It does not test, does a model get, as a model has different values of this, is that model better than another model? You need to do a proper test for, is one model better than another model? How about some right answers to answering this question? You can do the, the proper comparison of the chi-squared test. Does the chi-squared value rise if we drop uh, SMB? But you have to use the same V matrix across the two. And what you're doing when you drop SMB is, is you're allowing the beta and the H to change. And the central story here is that by dropping SMB, maybe the larger betas of small stocks would pick up the, the small firm premium. Well, you have to rerun this regression with different values of beta and H, not just look at, the, uh, look at the regression that we have. That's why looking at the mean of SMB alone doesn't uh, answer the question. Another uh, uh, right way to do it is to estimate it in stochastic discount factor form. Estimate expected returns covariances on the Bs. These Bs, whether these Bs are zero, does answer the question in a way that whether the lambda here, the lambda on uh, E of SMB equals lambda, does not answer the question. And the reason is because of, of the, the, the meaning of this equation. If B is zero here, that means dropping this, uh, we don't do any damage to the discount factor's ability to price other assets. The lambda being zero is, is SMB itself priced? That's a right way of stating the question. That's a wrong way of stating the question. You can see the central issue here. The central issue is that the factors might be correlated. 
If the factors were uncorrelated with each other, we wouldn't have any of these problems. If the factors are uncorrelated with each other, dropping S and B doesn't change your estimates of beta and H. So all this thing turns into the alpha, and testing for that being zero uh, is a test of whether the alphas are increased. It's when the factors are correlated that dropping S and B changes the betas and the H's. Uh, that's the single versus multiple regression issue. That's the case when betas are not equal to lambdas. If all the factors were uh, independent, if you were uncorrelated with each other, these covariances would be the same as the multiple regression betas, and the Bs would be proportional to the lambdas. So that suggests more answers, practical answers to this question. Put SMB on the left-hand side. Let us look, run SMB on the market and uh, on the market and HML. If SMB can be priced by the other assets, if the alpha of the S is zero, then in fact we can drop S from the asset pricing relationship. You can see what we're doing is we're orthogonalizing. We're, we're taking care of that, that correlation between S and B and the other assets. And that's another way to state the same relationship. Let's create a new SMB factor that is the old SMB factor minus un, uh, orthogonalized relative to the market and HML. Well, if the mean of that orthogonalized factor is zero, then in fact we can drop SMB from this relationship. So it's quite possible to do. There's quite a few ways to, to perform this test. Do the alphas drop? Uh, is there a stochastic discount factor? Can we drop the B or these easy ones? Can we price SMB using the other factors? Then we can drop it as a pricing factor. Those are all right ways to answer this question, which reflect the correlation between S and B and the other factors. If you're not convinced, here's an example. Uh, suppose that the cap M actually holds. 100% cap M is true. And you investigate a multi-factor model where we use the market and we use Microsoft. Uh, Microsoft is taking over the world, so the Microsoft factor, is that going to be important or not? Well, what would happen if we look at this multi-factor asset pricing model, which we know by assumption is not needed? You don't need that extra factor. Well, is the mean of Microsoft, or the factor risk premium of Microsoft, is Microsoft priced? Is its lambda greater than zero? Absolutely. Is the T on M greater than zero for many stocks? Absolutely. Does, does adding Microsoft raise the R squared to this equation? Absolutely, for the whole tech sector. They all move together. That soaks up an extra source of variation. You can see that all of those would be very misleading answers to the question, should we drop Microsoft, which we don't need in an asset pricing model. To, to see the reason why, well, Microsoft, let's, let's create an orthogonalized Microsoft. It's the return of Microsoft minus its beta on the market. If the cap M is true, the mean of the orthogonalized Microsoft return is in fact zero. And that tells us we don't absolutely need it to include an asset pricing model. It's not doing any harm. The alphas are the same with one or the other, but it is not needed in the asset pricing model to price the other things. So pricing, uh, diagnostics, can we drop one factor in, in favor of another, helping us to navigate our way around which factors are really important and which are not for explaining means? That's an important thing to do. There's some pitfalls, and there's some right ways to do it. Thank you.